So what I want to talk about today is I want to talk about this is a Mitsubishi 2060U. It is a um, 22-inch tube, 20-inch viewable um, monitor from 2000, October 2001, roughly. It was the best monitor on the market, voted at least by Tom's Hardware at the time. Um, it is the last of the non-super bright tubes, so you could probably argue it's the best of that technology. Um, what I want to talk about today is CRT brightness, right? All monitors from this time have a, um, have like, uh, they, they, well, we, even today we talk about sRGB mode, right? Um, and, and how brightness these are, how bright these are. Now these monitors have a, um, I think a Mac, this has a maximum rating of a hundred CD, um, 100 CD M meter squared or whatever it is, right? Um, that's very typical of most CRT monitors. Most CRT monitors range, actually range between, say, oh, I think 65 to, uh, to 80 to, or to, to 100 type thing, 65 to 100. But the reason why these are not nowhere near as bright as like the 300 CD LCDs and all this sort of stuff, or at least early ones from 10 years ago, um, is because... Um, it's often forgotten the sRGB standard. Um, I th I believe if when you're checking on Wikipedia, the actual re reference sRGB also has a luminance um, limit, and that is 85, um, 85. Well, um, CDM2, 85 CDM2 is reflected in this monitor's settings, because if you go to the OSD different modes. So, um, if you have a look, sRGB mode, sRGB mode is not as bright as 6500K. Well, let's have, let's have a look at that. Let's go here. Here we go. So, color temperature, 6500K, then you've got 5000K, and you've got sRGB. But sRGB in this context is a tr because this monitor was made at the time when it was uh, well it was very important this is the most high end monitor this compl this monitor complies with the 6500k um, sRGB um, very very accurately because it even reduces the brightness to 85 C D M2 I believe um, the, the, it, it matches, the, the sRGB is not what we see it on modern monitors today. Like at the time, sRGB also meant a limitation on the luminance, right? So, and I guess the idea behind that is that it would, um, essentially it, it's to make it so, you know, like, you know, it's perfect for graphic design artists and, and, uh, and, um, what do you call it, like photographers and such, that their, their images are perfect, you know, a representation of when they print them out, or at least as close as they can get. So using sRGB on this monitor is, it's, it's a, you know, for, for everyday use, it's a joke, right? Like I thought, oh yeah, sRGB, that's what it says online. You, you, got, you can't think about it in the modern context. It's the reference brightness. So Going back to it, 5000K, well, that's, you know, that's just ridiculous. We're not going to use that. Um, 6500, um, 6500 is what you want to set it to. But a lot of the reviews at the time about this monitor, people complained that um, when you set it to 6500, um, it caused a lot of, um, what do you call it, uh, color, um you know, like it caused a lot of issues with the with the color. Uh, it wasn't bright enough, and uh, so what I've done here is that. And then I think if you go to temperature one, it's the, it's normally ninety three hundred K. But what I've done is I've actually modified set color one. So if you have a look here. The RGB values for 6500K, which also which aligns with the with the well, I guess the color temperature thing, are 69, 50, 45, right? And those are there's like one or two button clicks, like plus plus 
to get into the center like you have to get it you have to memorize the plus plus because the percentages there's like two button presses per percentage sometimes three it's a bit weird um but what i've done here is a lot of people at the time like when these monitors when you complained it wasn't bright enough and that you had to increase the rgb values now um, but they also said that, oh, well, if you can increase the RGB values to get more brightness, it, it causes color bleeding. So to give you an idea about what I've done here is that effectively I found that, that the display adapter, as long as you have a good display adapter like what I've done where I plugged the DPU 3000 directly into the, um, into the, into the, you know, the VGA socket at the back, literally right up, means you've got the perfect signal. And that means that if you try and push the RGB values on this, believe it or not, um, the crappier the adapter that I found that you have, the more that you can push the RGB values because the signal that's coming in is weaker and so you need to push them higher. Um, now, what I've effectively done is if you have a look, 69, 50, 45, I've pushed the values by 5%, right? So, because before this was 9300K, so the values were, I think blue was up here about 60 something, and then, you know, green, red. But I, I've effectively, what I did was I replicated 60, well, the 6500K settings and just added 5%, right? Um, the reason why I didn't do any more than that, um, I maintain the ratios between red, blue, uh, green, and blue, though, you know, just a 5% increase, if you know what I'm saying. The reason why I didn't do um, that is because. They mentioned color bleeding. Now watch this, right? Color bleeding, what's this all about? So I'm gonna add, I'm gonna push the red setting. That didn't do anything. Uh, oh, hang on, I know what, I know what it is. So. Okay, so this is, uh, how do you determine that color bleeding is happening? So I have this thing called the ESO Monitor Test Suite, which is the ESO are quite a high-end brand, you know, of like rebadged Dimatron monitor, like supplier back in the day. You know, they were famous for, well, they still are around now, but they were famous for having better color, the best color accuracy in the business, if you know what I'm saying. Um, so yeah, that's anyway. So this is a this is their monitor test suite, and it has stuff for CRTs in it. Um, so you know you've got your you know your grayscale, you've got your colors, all that sort of stuff. You know, bleeding the standard test card. But what you want to do is you want to go to this screen, right? The pure red screen. Now red is the most oh, well, it's the easy, it's the quickest color to degrade in a CRT. So it's um, you got to, it's, it's a good test of this thing. Now, if I have a purely red background, watch around here and also around here, right? Now I'm going to increase the red value and you'll see what color bleeding is. Okay, so you see it? Right, so I've got that 100 now. So you guys, you can see this purple, this um, purple um, that has appeared, right? Now, the same thing would happen with green and blue, but red being the highest value in 6500K, um, when you reach that, when you reach that, um, what do you call it, you know, like such a high thing, then you've got color bleeding. So you've got the colors essentially bleeding out and, um, you know, that's why you've got purple there. So what do you, and I found that if you look really, really closely, it doesn't, there's still an outline. I know it doesn't look like it. There is at 72. Um, but effectively, yeah, the highest you can push it is 74, a 5% increase in the RGB values. Um, so you're driving the guns 5% guns harder. Um, any higher than 74, I found, it just, it, it doesn't, um, it, it just, it, it just, there's always that, you know, like idea of a color bleed type thing. Okay, so, yeah. So I keep it on, what, 74, 55, 50. And to give you an idea of the difference in brightness, um, I'll take it down to two so you can see that. You can definitely see like 6,500K and then 6,500K bait ratio boosted by 5%. 
Um, and that's really what everyone did back in the day. If I've read all the reviews of these monitors, they said, oh, yeah, they're great after you push the RGB values. So I think Mitsubishi were very conservative. Monitors back in these days, mon gaming was definitely their afterthought. I mean, it wasn't a, it wasn't like a stand, bulk stand at 17 inch. These monitors were like over $1,000, you know, type thing. Um, $1,200 Australian, $1,400 Australian, that type thing. Um, I never saw one back in the day. Biggest one I had was a 19 inch, and I think I only ever saw 19 inches. Um, so yeah, that's so you push those five those values by five percent, and there you go. So ignore the sRGB. That's what it is.